In this video, we're going to talk about what is a radian. Right, and we'll learn that. All right, so when we mention the measure of an angle in degrees, what do we actually mean? So let's say we're talking about like a 45 degree angle. Right, what it actually means is we kind of have our 45 degree angle. What we do is we think about it inside of a circle. Oops inside of a circle. That's a terrible circle, but whatever, it'll do the job. And then we know there's 360 degrees in a circle, so what we do is we break up this circle into 360 equal pieces, which is actually not gonna go all the way around. And then we basically count how many of those pieces we hit. So if we broke this up into 360 equal pieces and we counted, we figured out whether we hit 45 of those pieces to make this angle. I mean, what's wrong with degrees? Really, there's nothing terribly wrong, but we'll see that there's a slightly better way of doing it. So this notion that there's 360 degrees in a circle is a completely man-made notion. Um, the Aztecs kind of did it first way back in the day, but the reason 360 was chosen is just divisible nicely by a lot of numbers. 360 is by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10, or 9, 10, 12. Um, so all these numbers divide 360, so if you want to break up a circle into like a nice pizza slice, right? It's easy to do because it's divisible by all of these numbers. Uh, but 360, there's nothing inherently special about it. There's been other cultures that have used gradients, which is when a four circle has a 400 units. Why would that be nice? Because then a right angle is 100, and that seems like a really nice number for a right angle to be. I bet basically it's just somebody one day saying like 360 is our number or 400 is our number. There's actually no like reason it has to be 360 or 400. Right, and due to this kind of human element of just picking a number. Right, when you go into higher level mathematics, right, this, like 360 always keeps popping up and causing problems. We need to figure out another way to define an angle. All right, so basically the way we're gonna do it is using some geometric property of angles and circles all right, to define our angle size, and that's gonna be called a radian. I chose a slightly more complex definition for radian, but what we're going to use it for, we'll use a slightly modified version. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our unit circle again. All right, so we use the unit circle a lot for sine and cosine, and we're going to use it again for radians. All right, we have our unit circle. We have our angle on the inside. Let's just call it that angle. The measure of this angle in radian is just how long this segment of the circle is. All right, so it's just depending on how big our angle is, will kind of increase or decrease this part of the circle that my angle is hitting. And it's called the intercepted arc. This is another one of those things that, that's the formal definition. You don't really need to know it's called the intercepted arc, but you have to know that this is what you're kind of measuring when you're finding an angle in radian. So we're relating it to a circumference of a circle rather than it's kind of some made up number 360. All right, so we know a full revolution in degrees is 360. What's it going to be in radians? Well, first we need our circle. And then our angle is going to start here. And then we'll revolve all the way around until it's back in the same place. So what's the intercepted arc? The intercepted arc is, I'm going around, going around, going around, the entire circle. All right, so the intercepted arc is the entire circle. Well, what is that? It's the same as the circumference of the circle just two pi r. We're using a unit circle, so r is one, and that simplifies to two pi. All right, so this is the student's biggest gripe with radians when they're learning it, is that 360, it's a whole number. Yeah, it's kind of big, um, but it's like a thing that's easy to, to memorize. For radians, we have this pi that's pretty much always gonna be here, all right, because the full circle in radians is two pi. All right, what's a half revolution in radians going to be? All right, well, here we have oops, our circle. We have our angle, which is a kind of straight angle. All right, we've only gone halfway around the circle. And again, what's our intercepted arc? It's just the top half of the circle. Right. And I keep saying the word half, which if the full thing was 2 pi, we're doing half of that, and we get pi. So half of a circle in radians is pi, and that'll be really useful um, soon. All right, so full circle is 2 pi, half of a circle is pi. 
All right, so the goal of this lesson is just to kind of simply understand what a rating is and why I'm making you learn a new way of doing something you've already been doing for a long time, right? You've been using degrees for as long as you've been doing triangles and things. All right, so we're learning this because radians is a more inherent definition from kind of geometric properties, all right? And in future math classes, are pretty much only going to use radians because weird stuff doesn't happen like it does when you're doing it with uh, degrees. And really, if you zoned out for this whole video, really all you really need to remember from this video is that a full revolution in radians is 2 pi. And again, some students get mad because now there's this pi always hanging out, and pi is this weird number that's 3.14, whatever. I basically you'll just always be able to leave this pi here and just know 2 pi is a full circle in radians.